My name is Paul Dowdy, president of the Providence Firefighters, and we're in opposition to this bill. Um, but at this point, probably not for the reasons that you think. Um, I think this is a, a clear case of when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And I think we saw a little bit of that when we heard from the governor's council. I don't think that he instilled any confidence that this has been properly vetted, and that's a, that's a concern that I share. And for particular reasons as are related to Providence, uh, the analysis that Mr. Tarantino provided us revolved around the contract examination. But when we look at the numbers of the groups of retirees in Providence, there's really three different groups. There's a group that are represented and have a COLA benefit through a contract, but there's also a group that has a benefit through a consent decree, which is an agreement uh, that's essentially blessed by the court. And we think that raises separation of powers issues um, that, that is, at this point, I've not been made aware that have been properly vetted. In addition, there's a second group of retirees um, that sued for their benefit and have a, uh, both a Superior Court decision and then a decision affirmed by the Supreme Court uh, that we think raises collateral estoppel issues on whether uh, this, this legislation could undo or suspend the COLAs. And from a practical point, and that's, that's what I'm here for, as a practical point, that really is going to determine who shares the cost. If we were to put aside the merits on, on whether uh, philosophically and principally I agree that you can suspend the COLA, without knowing that, I don't know which group is going to bear the burden because as Mayor Tavares explained the plan, he suggested it'll take 10 years uh, with a suspension of the COLA to restore the fund. But that's premised on affecting all three groups of retirees equally. And we have no legal opinions, none, that support that premise. Without knowing what's going to happen to these three groups, you run a real risk of having one group be without a COLA for, for somewhere on the order of 20 years. Um, so I think before this goes forward, uh, we, we really need to slow down, take a look at it. What are those different legal impacts? Make sure that both the governor's office, the mayor's office, um, and this body uh, have taken a look at, at where we are in regard to the, the legal standing of both the consent decree and the Supreme Court decision upholding the rights of that second group of retirees. Uh, my second short point is I've provided you with a Supreme Court decision from 1999. Um, because a number of people, uh, primarily pundits, have suggested that the unions took no action when the unfunding of the pension was going on. And this, uh, this uh, Supreme Court case, Retirement Board versus CNC, um, the unions through the Retirement Board, at, at that point uh, there were several members from the unions on that board, sued the mayor to suggest that you need to fund the pension system. And on page two, the Supreme Court said, absent an agreement or some other contractual requirement, the city is free to fund its pension system in any manner it may wish, provided each beneficiary is paid the agreed upon benefits to which the beneficiary is entitled. That decision was uh, handed down in 1999. And I've also included uh, a record uh, in an email from Richard Kerbel to myself that outlines the city's history of of payments, what percentage they funded it. And you can see during the decade um, from essentially 95 when this was filed until uh, 2006, uh, it was quite severely unfunded. Thank you for your time.